Yep. Tag team, back again. Something, something, something. Let's begin. Whoop, there it is. Whoop, there it is. Whoop, there it is. Oh. Oh, yep. You guys remember that, right? Oh, yeah. We're in the parlor, and he's been doing that all day. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you guys say something that's appropriate or inappropriate, I'm just going to answer back, or if there's a quiet moment. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yep. My cousin loved that song. My cousin was a couple years older than me. He was just all about that at that time. That's how I heard about it. <laughs> I mean, it was everywhere when I was in school, man. Everywhere you went, you know, that was being played uh, constantly on the radio, on television, at ball games. You know what I mean? Just crazy. Yeah. Like, I'm talking like the high school ball games. <laughs> Or uh, hell, you know, just uh, it's 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 insane how much that song was everywhere at one time, and nobody can name another tag team song. I mean, I dare you. Oh, right now, name another tag team song. <laughs> Since I have a laptop in front of me, hang on. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was actually it was that way for several more years too. Because I honestly, I'm not old enough to remember '93, but I do remember that song being everywhere. Um, several years after that, even like, right, it was that was huge. I think it was in Space Jam, too. Was, was it not like a sequel, but like also in Space right, Jam? Yeah. <laughs> 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 What's going on, everyone? This is Falcon Van the Polar. I'm joined by introduce yourselves. Chapel, Keith, Barnaby Jones. How y'all doing tonight? Not so bad, you? Pretty, pretty good. Oh, a little better now. <laughs> we got a little little right up here. Nice, oh. nice. Well, well, we need to jump right into it today because it looks like this is already going to be a two-parter for us. Uh, we had planned, as you remember from the last episode, uh, that we talked about being in the Wayback Machine doing music in 93 and games for 94. Already got a pretty big list. I think all four of us do. So we're going to jump right into the Wayback Machine. Everyone get your arms ready for the motion. And we're there. We're there. Animation right here. Boosh. What's up, 1993? How does it feel? For me to be two. I'm two now. So it's great to be back to 12. (laughs) Yeah. I was 12. Fun times. Fun times. So you guys have lists because I tried to start a list on Sunday. I started doing research for this and I just gave up writing the list. So that's why I got the laptop and I got like four, five, six tabs open right now. Jeez. <laughs> there was no I mean, point they... writing down. There's no point. I mean, it's every, every other song and every other album that came out in 93 was good to awesome. <laughs> yeah, there's a big list. I was going to say, it's definitely. I definitely wrote mine down, but I definitely don't have four four tabs worth <laughs> but i've got a lot of stuff written down i've got a pretty big list uh oh. i i looked up something this time i think we'll do something a little different i uh, looked up some bunch of trivia for some random stuff that happened in 93 musically oh, uh, right. so i'm going to start with that and we'll just kind of some of these will probably go into uh some good segues uh cream ccr the doors van morrison and sly and the family stone were inducted in the hall of fame that year rock and roll so that's kind of cool. That's a good induction right there. Yeah, yeah, huge list. I thought that was pretty killer. Um, Michael Jackson apparently played the Super Bowl that year, and it got that was the year that got them to start buying bigger and bigger acts for the Super Bowl. Apparently, his success was so well they got a huge bump in ratings or something. Right. Uh, that was huge. Yeah. I mean, everyone saw that. Did you remember? I don't have a clue. Yeah, I, re- I remember seeing it live, and it was a heck of a performance. I mean... I what was he playing? Do you remember? Is it songs he was singing at the time? I'm just curious. Song wise, no. I can I just see the image in my head. Um, you know, it was probably something off of Thriller and something off of Dangerous because that would be his album right before that, is my guess. Right. But I remember seeing him in that white flowy top and on the stage dancing, you know, doing that shit. Um, <laughs> the Michael Jackson shit, yeah. We got it. <laughs> Randomly, Michael Jackson also had an interview with Oprah, which is apparently one of the most watched interviews of all time that year. I don't fucking know why. Uh, Elton John had a concert that he had to end early because grasshoppers swarmed the stage in Australia. I thought that was fucking hilarious. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Elton John brought on the, uh, you know, some like a, 
like locusts from the Bible, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew Rocket Man had some type of ulterior motive the whole time? It's actually a curse upon Australia. Uh, one thing Keith will be happy about, GNR's final gig was that year until what? 2016. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, fuck that band. Fuck, no, not the band. The singer. Axel. <laughs> Uh, this was something I didn't know. Apparently, Rage Against the Machine did a four. They had a 14 minute set at Lollapalooza, and they didn't play a single song. They just stood there naked with the words PMRC on their chest. To I remember that. Apparently, yeah, yeah like they're to protest the fact that Killing in the Name of got banned on the radio. Thought right. that was crazy. Thought that was another random thing. Um, wow. Nirvana's unplugged was that year. You know, was, we'll mention that shortly too. Uh, or to film that year at least. I don't think the album came out until 94. 94, right? yeah. 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 So. And one other small thing that will kind of relate back, Tooth and Nail Records formed, which is the record label that 238 was on. thought that was kind of neat. Oh, uh, wow. Just saw that on the list of stuff that year. So I thought we would start off with some of that random trivia. And uh, who wants to start with this massive list of music? <laughs> well, uh, Mark obviously has the massive, massive list. <laughs> well, be there it is. Some of the ones that he's he's got. The already, these aren't even like my list. I, I brought up other lists, you know, because I, I mean it was every genre, especially as a kid. I was soaking it all up. So right. I even I liked uh, Dream Lover from Mariah Carey. <laughs> That's a good. <laughs> yeah, I'll admit it. I don't care. That's a good song. A good song. Nothing but a G thang from Dr. Dre that came out oh, that year. Brother, <laughs> that, that was a I didn't see that one. Yeah, dude, I, I loved a lot of like old school rap. You know, Dragon there was. Snoop? Yeah, yeah, well, had, do, yeah, Doggy Style come out that year. Yeah, that was on my and list. That, I remember, I remember uh, spending the night with my cousin, and it's like late at night. You know, well, late at night, probably like twelve thirty. Her parents were in the bed, and we're like listening to Doggy Style, laughing, you know, because it's like something we shouldn't be listening to, you know. Like, there's that whole like uh, track where it's just like him getting on with some girl in a bathtub, and then it ends <laughs> kind of abruptly. And it was just funny as hell, you know, especially when you're 12 years old. That shit was just hilarious. And, uh, <laughs> but you know, yeah, Dr. Dre. Uh, hell, I mean, Tupac. Uh, he he had an album about that year. All for my. I'm not going to finish the rest of the title, but uh, <laughs> 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 but uh, you know, uh, uh, Cypress Hill had an album about that year uh, with Black Sunday. That, that yeah. that's right. Yeah, yep. I was definitely waiting for y'all to bring that one up. I know uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> one of the greatest super- rap albums of all time also came out that year. Enter Wu Tang. That was on my <laughs> list too. Yeah, like feature. I mean, they had like Cream, <laughs> Take Your Neck, uh, fucking what else? Playing ain't nothing to fuck with. Playing ain't nothing to fuck with. Like, <laughs> what he just said. <laughs> that was hilarious. Uh, I know. Um, I know Zach. You'll like this. I remember you like the song. The oh, what's it called? I'm, I'm looking at a picture of it right now with the hat up. And I'm like, get real high in a ball. Oh, you the know? four non blonde song. Yeah, that's yeah. called up. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, that's a drunk anthem. Though. I don't know who doesn't love to sing that song once you've had a little bit too much to drink. Like that is a tremendous yeah. banger <laughs> of a song after you've had four whiskeys. I, re- uh, I remember that song. This I, was, uh, I remember when it hit, and people had very mixed emotions. Like either you loved it or you hated that song when it came out. But now, yeah. dude, I still hear it all the time. I, I hear it on. Uh, working at Walmart on Walmart radio sometimes and I'm just like, strange just because that one line uh, yeah just that the, one line but I hear it get real high I get oh. real high and I <laughs> oh yeah I've sang that drunk at way too many parts I, I, I missed that one somehow so that's killer yeah that's yeah. a great song uh, another just funny one uh, Green Jelly had three little pigs come out that year off of their oh, album oh yes uh, yes. so want to throw that one out there. I mean, who doesn't? I, I, I love that fucking song. I do. Uh, absolutely. Dude, I had that tape too on cassette. Did you? <laughs> yeah. That's pretty uh, cool. Uh, you know, a uh, little known fact they used to be called Green Jello and actually got sued by Jello. Had to <laughs> the name to Green Jelly. 
That one was a lot of fun. Little it, pig, little pig, let me in. No, it, no, it, no. <laughs> As a fan of animation too, you know, I love the video because it's all like old school claymation and oh, stuff, man. you know. So you can imagine that that two minute and 30 second video probably took them like, I don't know, uh, 12 weeks to make. <laughs> <laughs> man, I want to watch it right now. <laughs> uh, that reminds me a, a random weird segue but uh, that reminds me if, in that uh, the couple of Parks and Rec ec- uh, episodes where Ben is doing the the clay modeling and he's listening to Letters for Cleo who had an album come out that year uh, mm. so and I don't know anything about Letters to Cleo except for the, about Parks and Rec so that's it that's all I got but random segue I not liking them <laughs> <laughs> I know that one song they do when Ben loses his shit when the lead singer looks at him and like winks at him. That song she's doing then, that's not so bad. Right, right. I don't even remember it. I re- oh, yeah, they play this show in Parks and Rec. That's right. Yeah. I couldn't. Yeah. I, that's right. That one, uh, one more good funny one to, to list. Uh, mm, by the Crash Test Dummies Crash come out. Test <laughs> yes, that's that deep ass voice. Once. There was a open door. <laughs> I, I honestly love the Weird Al like parody of that song. Yeah, oh, Alapalooza yeah. was one of my list that came yeah. out that year. Alapalooza. Yep. <laughs> oh awesome. my god! Because the I mean, it, literally that parody did not come out long after the single. You know what I mean? The original single. Yeah. So uh, it was uh, it was crazy because uh, I had a uh, I had a satellite station called the Box back then. I just got just got satellite this old backwoods country boy finally got satellite at 12 years old and uh (laughs) and it it was the box was a station it was a 24-hour music station and you called in and then you punched in a code for the video you wanted to see and depending on what your whenever you done it you know what i mean it's like god knows who all's in front of you and how long you have to wait to see your video but i can remember doing that because i think i used to go on and uh request Danzig songs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I remember the Crash Test Dummies. I would they you would literally see the Crash Test Dummies video and then the Weird Al parody right after like side by side sometimes. It would just be hilarious. But Alapalooza actually that was one of his most spot on because I think it came out later in the year because it actually had a lot of like it had I don't know if you remember Living in the Fridge, which was a Living on the Edge Aerosmith parody. Oh which is off of get a grip you know which i guess a segue into that real quick because my god what a great fucking aerosmith album that is oh and god god that is one of the best that ones was, oh. that was it that was like the run and get that epitome. i've got the um the cow cover special edition one. Oh, no. oh really yeah it's like it's it's not real cow hide or anything but <laughs> <laughs> that'd be gross um so it's just like an udder with the ring through it like you've got a cow yeah. udder in the special edition. <laughs> It's the the fuzzy, the fuzzy one, but yeah, dude. What, oh, that the fuzzy under. I got the fuzzy under. <laughs> fuzzy under is a good alternative band name. I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> yeah, I remember walking into Rasputin Music and just seeing that, and I was like, "Whoa, what's this?" And looked at it, and it had to because nothing on it says anything on the outside, so it had the label on top that they put. It said, "Oh, it's a new, a new Aerosmith album." Like. I have no idea. I just bought it on a whim, and it was my favorite album from them. I definitely had a lot of singles. That's for sure. A lot I mean, of all the singles were bangers. Off that, crying, crazy, amazing, living on the edge. There's probably a fifth one that I can't think of. Eat the Rich the, had a, yeah. a little bit play. That was a great song. Yeah, but crying is my favorite. That fucking song. It's so good, man. It's just it's the perfect song, really. Crying, crying and crazy definitely are two of my favorites from that uh, that album. Definitely crazy because of the the video. The video, oh, both oh, the videos. God, dude, See, you yeah. have no idea how twelve year old Corey was in love with Alicia Silverstone yeah. and uh, 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 um, huh? yeah, Liv Tyler. Lady, lady Chapel over here going, Liv Tyler, Liv Tyler. I'm like, yeah. I, know. <laughs> I, I remember the leather pants on Liv Tyler. Uh, oh, nothing. my God. 
cool. I was like, there's one thing Steven Tyler did right, was create that. <laughs> well, you remember in the video, they're not in it, you know, together. It was different, because I think he he refused. He was like, she can have, right. I'm going to help but her out, but honestly, I don't want to be a part of it. That video was a big stepping stone in both of those girls' careers as uh, as actors, actresses, you know. Yeah. Uh, but you remember that? Um, I remember oh, seeing that first, and then all of a sudden, you know, Clueless comes out not longer, you know, yeah. not long after that. Uh, you know, your uh, uh, Liv was in like Empire Records a few years later. After that, you know, she <laughs> was in that thing you do. You know, she started to get her name out there. Lord of the Rings, for Christ's sakes. You know, uh, but yeah, it's crazy because it feels like Alicia had a a bigger explosion sooner. Sooner, her, yeah, so that her, yeah, for sure. Shorter. Whereas Liv's was a slow burn, and then she ended up in Lord of the Rings. So I mean, you can't get higher than that. I think once Alicia, uh, Alicia right. hit, uh, once she hit like Batgirl in Batman Forever, I think that was like the nail in her. Career. Dude, she looked great. She looked great in it's that. It's not her man. fault. It was not her <laughs> fault, but it was just, it was just a bad movie. And I mean, it was campy as shit, but at the same time, it's like. It was just she had bad dialogue, you know. What her fault, you know? No, no. But yeah, no. she looked great. She looked fucking great. <laughs> Batgirl was awesome, man. But no, that start that started with her. I think Crying was one of the first singles with her. She in had, it. Yeah, she had that whole virtual reality video that was really, yeah, you know, really, really cool. I mean, a lot of that shit was really cool for the time, you know. That's, oh yeah. That's, you know, Aerosmith was, especially for music videos, I think they really put out solid, you know, product, even with their videos, were pretty, you know, pretty awesome during that time period. It's I mean, that whole album's that. rocking. We could sit here, we could probably do a podcast and just talk about Get a Grip, you know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's that's one of the biggest ones for, for my list, uh, actually, was that, I mean, as far as great songs, I mean, my God, it's just a really good album. Um, well, I think we talked about doing that as one of Van's albums thing uh, one time. Separately, too, had... yeah. We can still yeah. do it. <laughs> yeah. sure. So that may or may not be coming soon, folks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Depends Maybe on with a couple of crying. <laughs> we, we've been working on that for two years, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Barbie, what's one you got? I ain't heard from you in a bit. Um, As far as, like, uh, albums go, I did have a few more on the list. I, I honestly, I don't know how we haven't talked about it yet. Pork soda yeah. came out that year. Yeah, yeah, that was. Uh, I was been waiting for that the whole God. segue. I Can mean, I... <laughs> <laughs> oh, drinking man. down them cans of swine, you know, got me feeling fine. All right. Cheers to that. Cheers to Pork that. soda is always the first song I play for people. Because I know it's the, the worst one to play. I don't want people to get into this. Like, if you can't handle pork soda at its best, you can't handle it at its worst. Or whatever. Yeah, that's, that's funny because pork soda is one of the most difficult Primus songs to get into. But Mud on that, that very same album is what introduced most people to Primus. Yep. You know, that that video especially. I mean, that, that was a hit of a video. Uh, if anyone liked one Primus song, it was Mud. Yeah. Oh yeah. That time. Sure. It's funny. Like another track on that album was actually my introduction to Primus. Like so, my first Primus song I heard was Mr. Crinkle. Nah. I love and, that song uh, so much. <laughs> it, it, it's just so grand, and it's it's still one of my favorite Primus songs. Like I fucking love that song so much. Pork Soda was such a strange step from Seas of Cheese too. Like. From what I, I've, I've actually just recently learned that apparently a lot of the guitar parts in the first couple albums were not written by Lur. So, but most of Pork Soda was like there was that Todd Huth guy who was kind of worked with him before, but never did anything that he sings about on Fish On. Apparently, wrote most of the guitar stuff, but huh. Pork Soda is the first one, from my understanding, that Lur really did himself. And there's a really cold feeling about Pork Soda to me. Like there's something really cold in a good way not bad because I mean, there's so like dmv is like one of my favorite primate songs ever I, that's one of the reasons i wanted to buy keese's six string was so i could play dmv uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh nature boy another good one uh oh, but there's something so strange good. to me feeling about the album 
Um, my sister gave me pork soda for Christmas one year, and she always calls uh, she calls him Liz Claiborne. Uh, <laughs> she always like, you got that Liz Claiborne pork uh, pork rinds album or whatever? And she can never get it right. But it, she's the one who gave it to me. Uh, and I, yeah, I mean pork soda. It's uh, beautiful. <laughs> That's a great side project album name. Like if we if we ever do a side album, we should call it Liz Claiborne's Pork Rinds. <laughs> That sounds like a Les Claypool side pro. It totally does, you know. We've not trademarked two things in this podcast already, so that's. I don't think we can trademark Liz Claiborne, dude. I'm pretty sure someone's beat us to that. First of all, that's that's the entire that's the entire name of it. Like that's yeah. the name of the band. Trademark you know the whole thing. Like 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 the Tony Dance of da- tap dancing experience. That's a band. <laughs> <laughs> So don't tell me we can't go <laughs> Liz Claiborne's pork rinds as a band. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> okay. That's I'm writing it down for when we start it, uh, the Art Electronic we'll Project. We'll put a little TM in the corner or something. Right, right. right. <laughs> Spell yeah. the worst way possible. <laughs> right. Uh, and we'll we'll sell pork rinds with the album. That'll be part of the deal. It's like That'd you get an album and a bag of pork rinds. <laughs> you know, a bag of chips to go with an album. How cool is that? <laughs> great, yeah. great marketing <laughs> stunt, dude. Let's do it. It's high in sodium, but you get your protein. <laughs> and the potato chip coming soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. All right, what else we got, gentlemen? So, uh, something totally different. Uh, I love this song. Are you gonna go my way, Lenny Kravitz? Lenny Kravitz, man. That one, you know. that one to me was like my favorite era of Lenny Kravitz, right there. Just that album, that song. I mean, I remember people saying, you know, it was still a time period where people were like, "Oh man, there's a black guy with dreads playing hard rock." You know what I mean? It's like, uh, it's like he, he almost at that time period, people were like. They're like, oh, they got that Hendrix feel, but he's not, you know, of course you can't compare. But at the same time, he was just like that rock, that that free spirited rock and roll type. You know what I mean? That's still like I see missing from today's music. You know what I mean? I, I miss that. Whether or not what the music is, it's just that character he brings. You know what I mean? It was, it was a lot of it was very soulful for rock, you know. Um, oh, for sure. He, was, he had a great personality. He was also in a Simpsons episode with all in that one with I all the rock band camp. Right. Homer goes band camp. Yeah. Yeah. What a great. Yeah, he seemed like a great dude. And some of those songs, I wasn't into all of his material, but there was a handful of his songs that were great. I love that one. And I don't that like video. anything off that album. Like I looked at it, and it's not the song. I lo- I don't hate Lenny Kravitz, but. There was nothing off that. Th- I don't. I don't like. Are you gonna go my way? I think it's annoying. Honestly, oh, just, I love that song. I'm tired so. of hearing it. Honestly, <laughs> I think that's part of it. Uh, nor do I want to hear him do American Woman at the same point though. It's like I've just nah, heard I, it too I, many I, times. I'll yeah. I agree. I agree with that. Yeah, that one's weak. Yeah. Are you gonna go my way? Uh, just didn't ever didn't grab it for me. Um, but I like Kravitz. As a, that was actually the year I didn't write this down, but I read it when I was doing the trivia thing that he uh, Lisa Bonet divorced him. From the Cosby Show, a chick was yeah. married to him for some years. He got divorced that year, apparently. Um, uh-huh. Another one that for me that a lot of people really fucking love that just never caught it for me was the fucking Cranberries had that album that had Dreams and Linger on it. And I don't like the Cranberries at all. Like I don't. <laughs> Is that Sorry. the same album, Zombie, or was that later? No, it did not have Zombie. Zombies later. I, I like. It came out '94, '95, did it? Yeah, that was apparently. I mean, I just I didn't have this album because I did, dreams I can't stand. Linger is bearable, once a year or so. Yeah, I like Zombie, but there's not a lot of other there. Uh, uh, you know, like there was that one. Is Linger that one that was on all the damn uh, like? You've heard it Walmart. Like you teen, com- Walmart. teen comedy movies and shit like that, or teen. Do you have to? Do you have to? You Dude, have to. You have yeah, to. that song. Oh, oh, oh. You have to. Yeah. It goes on for yeah. a bit. I, I can we, go with that. I love that here. That song, <laughs> the zombie. I always loved the way it sounded, but we're not going to talk about that because it's not from this year. <laughs> yeah. Stay on topic, damn it. So, uh, <laughs> another one I had on my list. Um, I honestly, I don't like the whole album, but it did come out that year, and I do like one of the songs of it, uh, "The River of Dreams" by Billy Joel. Oh yeah. Uh, the the title track. 
you guys know the song. You don't know it by name, but it's that uh, in the middle of the night. In the middle of the night. Oh, yeah. I go walking in my sleep. I got your answer Joel. back. I, hate <laughs> I don't really like anything that Billy Joel's done. What? All right. Well, this podcast is over. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I just, just like, <laughs> what? I'm tired of hearing Piano Man. <laughs> I just, I, I, I can't do it, man. I'm sorry. I, I can't. My heart is so full at this point. <laughs> so you remember earlier when you were hitting the emoji keys? Which one's the disappointment emoji? Yeah. <laughs> I need to know that one. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. I, I can't get into them. I like most of the songs that may have been good at one point. Food Line has just shoved way too far in the dirt for me. Okay. Like you know, how many Food Line songs or Billy Joel. Like a lot. Like there's a lot. Go back and think. There's a ton of fucking Billy Joel songs. I just that done it for me. Like a lot of like sadly the grocery store business killed a lot of songs that I did at one point like. Um, you can't like them anymore. That's what just, the radio is. That's the radio effect. That's why you know I turned the radio off in the late '90s because it was killing. Dude, I started to hate Metallica because I heard them so damn much, and I loved Metallica. I still do, but. Nah, I mean, the radio, that, I don't know if that counts. It's a weird area to put, like, I actually like and respect this material, but fuck you, radio, or work, because you killed it for me. Right. Well, liked it at one point. I did like Piano Man. Uh, there was a couple other Billy Joel songs that I'm pretty sure I liked, too, but, I mean, at this point, I just, I can't name one. In the middle of the night, like, that song, I never, and then again, Food Line has just dug it into me too much. I have stocked too much yogurt today in the middle of the night or whatever that song is called. <laughs> too much. I hit my limit on Billy Joel and yogurt stocking. No more. Well, something else that you liked was uh, Ace of Base. Uh, yeah, the Stein came out that year. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Wasn't there a couple of hits off of that? All That She Wants and something else? It was two more singles I remember. I don't remember the names of them are, but the, yeah, the album's called The Sign. I remember that. Uh, I love, yeah, I do love that song, though. You know, I always want to do a cover of that where instead of playing that electronic thing, you play the, the bass part as the electronic. Doom, doom, doo, 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 you know, as would be a cool bass line instead of that weird, it's not like a theremin or something. I don't know. They've got, but. The fucking theremin. Uh, randomly, I wrote this down for you, Keith. Uh, you may or may have not listened to it, but Bjork's debut album came out that year, and that's oh, totally so well. up your alley. So I don't know any songs off of it. Call but you, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's yeah, yeah. Was that the uh, one with Human Behavior? I think was that year. No, because that's like the only only Bjork songs I know. So <laughs> I looked for that. <laughs> I love Bjork, man. Mm. She is she's awesome. What what I remember most about Bjork Chapel, you may know this, is the the line from the Venture Brothers, where they're interviewing the Monarch and they've got the flashback of him uh, banging Doctor Girlfriend the first time, and he's like, "Why'd you change the song? A man knows what song he was making love to with his wife the first time." Right. And it's like we wanted to, but Bjork's lawyers just would not budge. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's what he's he's getting. Uh, yeah, I, I remember that episode. He's getting yeah, that's the season one or episode one of season three where him and Doctor Girlfriend are getting partnership. <laughs> yeah. You know, for the Guild of Calamitous Intent. The Guild, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh right, that's something. Uh, we, that's something me and you could probably do a podcast on someday. Is Venture? We gotta get Dean, our friend Dean, over for that too. Cause oh yeah, he's, sure. he's what who got me into it really heavily. Uh, let's see on the list. Uh, Chapel, I'm surprised you not brought this up yet, but Undertow. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, un- Undertow, definitely. Yeah, it's on my list. Uh, I've just kind of been saving it for the right moment. There's you know so many is? albums on this list for me like that, where I'm like, well, yeah. we'll bring it up. Like, like he said Pork Soda earlier, and I was like, well, I'll just save that little gem for whenever it gets Right, gets right. I, did, <laughs> I, figured, like, I, I figured I'd save the bands that I know I'm the only one listening to for, you know, like when I just want to blabber on about something. But something like Tool, I think, is uh, is something we could all talk about, especially the, the the debut album for sure. You know, they had Henry Rollins on this record, so this is that was a big deal for me. Was yeah, it? yeah. If I let you, you would make me destroy myself. 
Damn, yeah, what do you? I don't remember, remember that. that track. I'm trying to. I, I I can't remember the name of the song right off the top of my head. But uh, okay, yeah, hold on, y'all keep talking. But uh, I mean, just the opening track, "Intolerance." I love that song to this day. Um, and they played it at the, the when I saw them live. They actually played it, which I thought was amazing, because I never thought they'd play anything from Undertow live. <laughs> uh, bottom, <laughs> bottom yeah. is the name of the song. bottom. Yeah. And, uh, you know, of course, Prison Sex and Sober, all from that same record. Uh, I just remember seeing the videos and, and just being freaked out watching, like, the Prison Sex video <laughs> or the Sober video at 12 years old. You know what I mean? I don't know what the hell I'm looking at, but I'm a, such a fan of animation and just weird shit. I, I just, I'm compelled to watch this. And that's how I, that's really what got me into Tool was seeing the videos and being into the animation and, and stuff, the stop animation. And they definitely have the best videos. Oh yeah, and that, and that was really Adam Jones, the guitar player. A lot of that's a lot of his own stuff. You know, he's a big art student and stuff, and so that was really a lot of his shit. You know. Well, you know, and, talking uh, about the same thing, um, not the same album, but you know, even though I wasn't the same age at the same time period, I was about the same age when I was getting into it. And it was Schism that got me into them. They were on Fuse one day with yeah. like the craziest videos, and Tool was on like three of the ten that was right. on there. And so, but uh, I think it was Schism, and yeah, Prison Sex was on there, and I can't remember the maybe no, it was before Ten Thousand Days, so it wasn't next. I like Vicarious. A lot, all their videos have always been cool. Oh, Everything yeah. Tool's done visually, they've always made sure that the, I mean their albums have the, the different artwork. Yeah, uh, and stuff, all the crazy shit. I mean, so that that's kind of been that's part of Tool is the artist side of it. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. That's and, the best uh, part of the the live show. Oh yeah, know, is the yeah. the background and the light show and the the video. Well, it definitely was this last time. I, you know, I was kind of I was actually blown away. Like I I didn't set my expectations super super high because I was somebody who I'm just like, look, if they're just going to play the new album, I'm going to be done. But it was a good mix of things from all their albums. And uh, the, the stage show and light show was one of the most superb things I'd ever seen live. That's a fact. You know, it was just... It, it, you did it, a concert it, it, chronicle. It did, it, yeah, I did the concert chronicles. And it was just... Uh, the light, I, I couldn't imagine how much money just goes into that show. Like, I'd heard people talk about the show uh, uh, Keith and Falcon went to compared to this one. And it's they're, they're like, it was night and day like for visuals and stuff. So I couldn't imagine how much money they pumped into this because the last time I saw them before that was for Lateralis and it was, I mean, it was cool, but it was nowhere near the visuals that they, they put on uh, for this last concert. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one thing I would like to add to what you said, you're like, you're like, I was 12 years old and I didn't know what the hell I'm, I was looking at. I am significantly older than 12 now and I'll still watch those videos and I still don't know what the hell I'm looking at. <laughs> I think that's consistent. Like, with right, right. <laughs> All I know is it, it creeped my mom out when she saw it and I was like, yeah, I've got to get into this band. <laughs> <laughs> I'll drink to that. There we go. I, I will uh, say, one of my favorite albums of all time, and I'm talking in my top five albums of all time came out this year. Uh, Typo Negative's Bloody Kisses Saw came that. out this year. And Bloody Kisses, I'm pretty sure was Roadrunner Records' first gold record ever. Huh. And, uh, you know, so Typo Negative, after this record, they had a lot of high expectations put on them for every record after that, but they never, they never reached that kind of uh, notoriety again you know what i mean like that was that was the album that was probably their most popular record i mean they stayed pretty uh pretty well known until until pete's death uh 10 years ago but that record was synonymous with i mean i was getting i, I don't i didn't i don't think i really got into typo negative till probably 93 94 but uh you know it's Going back, like, I remember, like, I had friends who were into it, but guys who were in bands in high school, you know, they're like, oh, have you heard Typo Negative? No, I've never heard Typo Negative. And they are playing me Bloody Kisses, and I had never, at that time, I don't think I'd ever heard a voice like that at that time period. 
in the 90s, in the early 90s. I mean, it was, he, he had one of the most interesting low, low vo- vocals I'd ever heard at the time. I always and thought he sounded like, like a, like a deep sound, deep voiced vampire, you know? Oh yeah, for sure. He was definitely, I mean, yeah. compared to their albums before Bloody Kisses, they definitely wrote Bloody Kisses and their follow up, uh, October Rust, for women. That it, for I mean, they would, Pete was attracted to goth girls, and he was like, "Oh, I know how to attract goth women," <laughs> and he did it. And he definitely did it with with Bloody Kisses, and uh, I mean, Christian Woman, uh, Black Number One. Uh, they have this. I remember they had a track on there where it just sounded like. Uh, tribal drums and a girl screaming in the background and uh, they're, they keep chanting yum yum eat them up eat them up and it was like it was called Fay Ray come out and play and Fay Ray was the actress in King Kong so it was just this stupid little track it, you know like I think a lot of people take typo negative as a ser- like serious even in their lyrics and whatnot. But everything's really tug and cheek sometimes. Like they don't, they didn't take themselves that seriously, you know. Um, so for a, a band that everybody was like, "Oh, it's a serious goth rock heavy metal band," and then they got this stupid track in the middle of it, <laughs> of just of just bullshit nonsense. <laughs> but you know, unless you know that Fay Ray was the actress in the original King Kong, you you weren't going to get the reference, you know. Well, you know. The more you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's cool. But also, uh, I want to throw out one of my favorite things ever came out that year, and it technically is not an album; it's an EP slash live album. But Danzig's Thrall Demon slash Demon Sweat Live came out that year. <laughs> Demon Sweat. But, yeah. So that it's like, like Danzig. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, <bro. laughs> but the, it had like three studio tracks. And like uh, uh, three live tracks, and it it had like you could go to like it had the secret track where you go to like track seventy two, and then it was like the uh, just the album version of Mother, but it was like a ninety three updated version because Mother originally came out on the first record in nineteen eighty eight, and so this there was like this reemergence for Mother. I remember like talking about the box earlier. I remember seeing that like. I was in the Nirvana, which, by the way, we'll get into that, too, in a minute about Nirvana this year. But I was in the Nirvana, and my dad was just kind of like, you know, he, he was like, he didn't get Nirvana. Uh, but, you know, he was a big rock guy. But he saw Danzig on, on the TV, and he was like, right, right there is what you need to be listening to. <laughs> I, I took that as like a dad band, you know what I mean? So I was like, you know, I didn't know who Danzig was. You know, I just saw that and I was like, oh, it's something my dad listens to. I, I don't want to listen to it. You know, it's just, it, you get that <laughs> automatic rebellion. But then I kept seeing the video and kept seeing the video on the box. And then that's how I became a dancing fan, honestly, was the box. <laughs> and the, uh, the box. The, you know, the mother video was from that Thrall Demon Sweat Live release. So, and wow. uh, a little side story, my, uh, you know, the band The Violent Fire that I've got, I, I talked Keith into helping me out with a little bit. <laughs> uh, we got, we got, we got, there the, it is. got the, oh! <laughs> <laughs> I got my name, uh, the name for the band, The Violent Fire, from this EP. Uh, because uh, there's a song, it's actually called The Violet Fire. But. You know, it was a Friday, so you know there was Jägermeister involved, and I'm 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 uh, texting some of the guys in, in the band, uh, and I'm like, "What do y'all think about the name The Violent Fire? It's a dancing song from an EP." I'm just drunk, and I keep calling it The Violent Fire, The Violent Fire, but it was not The Violent Fire at all. It was The Violet Fire. <laughs> you made the right choice because honestly, like that's not a good metal band name. Oh, right? not, like, not at all. Like not Violet all. Fire, <laughs> absolutely I mean, not. The like, lyric, you know, I mean, like, when you hear the song and you hear the lyrics, you're like, okay, I get it. But, yeah, it's just a, a title for a metal band. Yeah, that's terrible. But I was like, <laughs> they were like, they were like, hey, let's keep it. And I'm like, sounds great. We're the violent fire. Because <laughs> I, I was like already Googling. I was like, nobody has this name. <laughs> well, if they did, you could just change it to the violent ice. 
So. Right. <laughs> and then have some guy with like an ice ice cube gun. Choo choo. <laughs> like Mr. Freeze. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mr. Freeze, you know, you can just tweak him enough for copyright issues and put then him on the cover. Mr. Right? Reeds. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and and the, the, maybe to segue into something we all probably liked, uh, you know, Smashing Pumpkin Siamese Dream came out that year. Yep. Oh, yeah. Today Remember learning. is the greatest. <laughs> yeah, with that video where he's just driving a, a ice cream truck like, through the desert. It's like an ice cream. Yeah. It's like an ice cream truck. Yeah. Yeah. And Billy and Corgan cool had hair. <laughs> but but I mean, that's one of the that's one of the first little riffs or licks or whatever you want, I learned on guitar. <laughs> Right. It was just something everyone learned, and then it was funny. We all knew that that lick, but no one had to play the whole song. Best like, of it, yeah. Eh, after that, fuck it. I just want to know that piece. <laughs> what was the name of that? That uh, I can't remember the name of the song, but I always loved it when I heard it. Uh, uh, it has the timpanis in it. It's real slow. You know, Disarm. I used to be a little boy. Yeah. Disarm. Yeah. Oh man, I love that song. It's such a yeah. it's such a killer song. It's a pretty powerful, slow song. I, uh, yeah, it's a great song. Yeah, I just remember, I remember the, the timpanis being really prominent in that song. I used to be a little boy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dramatic percussion and shit. And yeah. I feel like it's hard to go back, for me at least, to listen to Siamese Dream after hearing Melancholy. Well, Personally, masterpiece. Well, that's not, yeah, it's like Siamese Dream. When I put it on now, like I, I tend to be more skipping. You know, here, here. Like I don't ever really hear Sharon Brock again. I don't. I'm just tired of that one. Uh, you know, <laughs> but like a few of them. But yeah, like with I, but that makes it hard for me. And we think we listened to it in the car on the way to a trip a few years ago. And that's what we think we talked about. Is the first time I really realized. I was like, wow, this is kind of. I just want to hear melancholy. Like, all of Siamese Dream just makes you want to listen to melancholy. Well, nothing they did after <laughs> melancholy stood up to melancholy. I don't. Think. Yeah. You know what I mean? I like mean, I think, and I, I, I'm not saying that he was spent as an artist or anything. You know, his art kept going and kept going. But I, I think it's like a commercial success and being a double album at that and being a commercial success. You know, you got to give it to Billy Corgan. You've got to give it to him for you know. Uh, for achieving that because even in that time period when double albums come out I don't I don't know another double album that did what Melancholy did so it's yeah. rare that double albums do that I mean any, in general you know double albums already kind of almost doomed to fail sometimes especially yeah. anymore oh yeah for sure usually they have so much filler material and you know I will say the second disc is weaker but there's still a couple of good ones on there overall there's like 15 17 great songs out of the almost 30 you get aren't they working on the new one too isn't i heard that the billy was back in the studio doing some some writing because he got the gish guitar back um, yeah i remember so, that story from what was the last year where he got his guitar back after what 20 years 25 something years crazy <laughs> uh but yeah I, I thought i thought reading that i thought i saw something about after that words that he was working on an album i don't know i guess we'll find out because yeah I, I, I think I'm all, the, to all the all the original band except for uh, darcy if I'm not mistaken, is part of it. Like he really got the pumpkin back together, except oh, for nice. us. Yeah. Very pretty good then. I hope it comes out this year, especially now that he's got plenty of time with this quarantine. Get right. to work, Billy. Maybe yeah, him <laughs> and James James Eha, they're they maybe they live together in the studio somewhere. They're writing another it's probably a three disc album this time. I'd say he's a busy <laughs> guy. He's a busy guy because he also owns uh, the NWA now, the National Wrestling. Yeah, I know he's got something to do with wrestling just from editing post to post yeah. every week. I hear his yeah, name so, pop you up. Know, I'm, I'm, uh, Billy's a pretty busy person, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> he talked about that on Rogan, too, when he was on yeah. he That was an interesting interview that he did. Uh, oh, I guess yeah. a little bit too far off the deep end. I but, definitely you know. want to hear his... Uh, I, I've been waiting... I actually wait for his book to come out so I can read when he talks about the person who shape-shifted in front of him. Yeah, that's the part that where it gets kind of strange to the Rogan podcast, too. Yeah, he's like, and he's like, I'll tell you off the air, and I'm like, ah! He's like, I got to <laughs> sale. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I just want to hear that story. <laughs> wow. That's their trip, dude. I saw them in concert um, 
It was probably a 95, but still, it was so great seeing them. They uh, garbage opened up for for Smashing Pumpkins, and what a killer show! It was one of the loudest concerts I had been to at the time, for sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, great sound. I mean, they sounded like the albums. I mean, that thick, thick guitar tone that they they sort of dabbled with it before on like Pisces Iscariot, and that the other one I'm blanking on the name of right now. But they really hit that sound with Siamese Dream. I mean, it was one of the fattest guitar tones ever. Well, he was you known know? to like play it like 50 to 100 times, right? I mean, didn't he have like yeah. guitar track after guitar track? Yeah. Just can you imagine the panning of that? Like every degree of pan has a guitar track each way. He's. I don't want to be the engineer <laughs> for Billy Corgan. That's for sure. <laughs> right. For sure. Yeah, I'm sure he wants to do it himself. <laughs> well, uh, another one you, you mentioned earlier that we might as well get we'll let you guys talk about. I got not much, not much to say. In uh, Yeah, uh, yeah that was. Right. That's actually my favorite Nirvana record. It's been my favorite Nirvana record since I was probably twelve. Because I when I was twelve is right when I was actually really getting into Nirvana. I would say they were my gateway band to heavy music, so to speak. Yeah. So, yeah. I really was, you know, I had, I had the, uh, I'd uh, heard the albums and uh, it was like, I'm just getting into him. And like a year later, that's when Kurt killed himself, you know? <laughs> so I was like, you know, uh, I felt like I just discovered something and it got taken away from me all in one swoop, you know? Yeah, we, yeah it was, we were robbed with only a couple of albums from those guys, you know? I mean, if you think about it, it's really they only... Pretty, I mean, they'd already had a pretty decent discography by then, but uh, I will, you know, not, I guess, you know, if you had unplugged after that, you know. Uh, yeah, but still, have, it's like, you you can imagine where it would have gone. There would have been would, another... Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. A couple sure. more great records were in that guy, at least. And if Courtney Love didn't kill him, go watch that fucking goat soaked in bleach. <laughs> Yeah, he did not kill himself. He did not fucking kill himself. Her and Carol Baskin. Yeah. This, this video is going to be banned. <laughs> this video is going to be banned by Courtney Love's attorneys. <laughs> Probably. I even think, you know, we talked about the age difference a little earlier. I think if I had grown up listening to it when it came out, I would be much more into it. I, like for me, I like Nirvana from like 14 to 16, but by the time I listened to it, it was in the two th early 2000s, I just heard on the radio already so many times. Nirvana's never been a huge band for me, but like when I first started playing bass, yeah, I learned every fucking song that they had. Uh, because oh. I think Chris Novoselic's a killer bass player. Uh, well, hope everyone in Nirvana is amazing. Dave Grohl, uh, everyone. You know? yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you know, you talk about the Unplugged, which I guess we'll talk about in a future episode, but that is like one of the best unplugs. I mean, that's probably the thing that I think that people remember more about unplugged than just about any other. I mean, that performance than just about well, any other performance. Well, what was cool is that like that um, purple, like acoustic. I was like, whoa, you know, because I'd heard that song before on Bleach, and uh, it's such an old Nirvana song. And when they played it acoustically for that, uh, I, yeah, it blew my mind then. But it gave them all new life, like uh, like Dumb from In Utero. Yes, yeah. I love the acoustic version. You know, one year later, that was just that was badass. You know, but it, well, it, in utero is such a strange looking record too. Like I, I had it on tape, and I just remember you know unfolding and looking at all the artwork. You know how the you know all the it, it was like you know medical uh, dummies of sorts. You know, with angel wings and stuff. It's all anatomically correct. You know, people. You know, people with angel wings. You know. That was part of their stage show. It was, you know, Heart Shaped Box came out, and you know that that visual is all in that video as well. Uh, Great you know, video. Uh, yeah, and I mean they had the song "Rape Me," like no one would. I don't think anybody could get away with writing a song called "Rape Me" right now. <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah. Oh, no way. <laughs> but the thing is, do you know what that that was? That was you know an anti-rape song. It wasn't oh, yeah, about for like sure. it is. I'm just me. saying, yeah. you know, people, you know, people take things more literal than actually trying to scratch yeah. the surface. They the just see the right. title and wouldn't even give it a chance to even learn about what it's about. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Not listen to the rest of the world around me, and I, you know, I was listening to it. <laughs> uh oh, what's happened to Keith? <laughs> Oh, 
All right, guys. Well, we've talked about a lot of music already, so there's been so much. We're going to take a short break, come back at it, and we will see you in the next episode. You know. Separate the art from the artist, because otherwise there would be no art. Right. There we go. Confucius over there. Confucius. Uh,